Good evening and welcome to the April 30th, 2018 Select Board meeting before the special town meeting and the annual town meeting of uh, Amherst. It is uh, 6.05 and we're calling the meeting to order. Um, just quickly, I want to check in with my colleagues regarding opening remarks, agenda review. Anything that we need to change on our agenda for this evening? Not for me. If not, then I think um, we will uh, perhaps uh, take things a bit out of order in lieu of Mr. Hornick being here and, and wanting to speak to a particular article. Um, so, um, are, well, let me ask this question. Are, is there anyone here for public comment not related to something on the agenda? That's related I, to No, I assume this is on the agenda. I do have one brief announcement related to this article. And that is we got a preliminary report from Alan Weiss of whatever Cold Spring Engineering. And it looks like almost all of the property surrounding the East Street School is going to be buildable. There's a tiny little corner of it that looks like wetlands. But for the most part, uh, that's good news. At least it's really worth it to go through with fixing this article. All right. So I believe that what we're uh, doing here in our action discussion items is, uh, which is air, uh, section four of our agenda, but B, take and review positions uh, on the April 30th, 2017 special town and annual town meeting. And so the article that Mr. Uh, Hornick is mentioning is relative to article 27 of the warrant. Um, and we have, I don't know if we have it in front of us. I don't think we do. Uh, some modified language relative to that article. Um, I think I shared that with each of you. I don't know if we got a printed copy. Mm, we didn't get a printed Unless copy. Unless it's on our desk, then we only have it electronic. Is this different than our, it's different than the script that was on our desk tonight, or oh. had that been updated? Oh, it's really? on our desk tonight. Because I don't know. You have to bow. Probably nobody. Because it looks like more than 11 words, so I'm guessing yeah, it's not yeah. So I had sent out, <clears throat> just to sort of update you on this. Please. So I had sent out, so the, the um, original suggestion of the uh, Municipal Affordable Housing Trust was to take out the last 11 words of the Article 27. Um, however, in testing that motion with the moderator um, and relative to some conversation at the trust meeting relative to another way that we might be able to operate, um, the moderator felt that taking out those words were, were such that they wouldn't be allowable as being within the scope of the article. And as such, uh, some alternative language was, was put in place. And if you look at uh, the script from tonight um, for Article 27, uh, most of it remain, most of the motion or most of the um, original text remains the same, but in that last sentence, Starting with, let me find the right place. Towards the end of the, the fourth line from there. Provided, however, that the town shall not convey said property, that part of the original, uh, gets uh, changed. To provided, however, that the town shall not provide a conditional commitment to convey said property to the Amherst Affordable. Uh, housing trust until the town council determines that a feasibility project meeting the above objectives has been identified and shall not convey such property until financing commitments have been obtained and key permits have secured. What this does, are we are we finding? Yeah, no, I, okay. I'm just asking. I'm if looking are at a red it. line and I'm looking at Mr. Hornick's version and right. I'm not clear yet as to whether or not that's conveyed in the so draft not, script we have tonight. It, it, uh, so, um, and if not, I don't know what the difference is. So, Mr. Slider, you sent us a red line, so it's okay. easy to have it pop out. Right. When I'm looking at this in the script, right. it's not the replacement article. Actually, maybe it, it has to the be same to me. where it says not provided a conditional. I, I think they moved the not. It, so that's wrong. No, that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay, that's the replacement. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Okay, got it. Right. I think so it's the, current. So yes, yeah, you're correct. To okay. provide the, yeah, all right. Thank you. So really you the last uh, three and right, quarter lines of the, the original is yeah. being replaced with yeah. some, some yeah. alternative text. This is good. Okay. So the intention is that 
um, a commitment to convey, which is sufficient for a developer to perhaps go and get financing, that sort of thing, uh, can be made without having to fully have it fully financed, permits granted, and all of that, which was the concern was that, as it was originally stated, you would have to have all the permits and financing in place before the conveyance could occur. And so what this allows for is a commitment to convey, which allows an RFP process, developers can work with the trust to, to, uh, to uh, move forward on a project because they have a certain level of, of guarantee that if they meet certain benchmarks, that that conveyance will occur. Probably. But the conveyance doesn't really, of the property, that doesn't happen, um, the actual conveyance doesn't happen until um, they meet the you know the uh, appropriate financing and, and permit criteria. But by allowing for a commitment to convey, then they can seek financing and work through the logistics of the project with some some reasonable guarantee that that uh, they'll get conveyance if, if they meet the other things. So that's the intention there. Did you want to add anything else to, the morning to that? No. I just want to assure people that we're not trying to go around the new town council. We look for a long and happy relationship between the housing trust <laughs> and the town council. So we wouldn't want to make a mistake of going around them with our first project. The basic problem was, as Doug has stated, that the language of the article required that the successful developer actually have everything in place uh, before the land could be conveyed. And what that meant, as a practical matter, is that they really couldn't pursue the financing and the licensing because they couldn't have assurances that the land would be conveyed once those elements and others were in place. So this kind of cleans things up. It doesn't require potential developers to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in moving the project forward without the assurance that the property will be conveyed if they follow through appropriately on the expectations that are in the contract. Ms. Green. Well, I, I was just uh, wondering, um, since this still has to go to the council, so it's a possible conveyance, but we're not actually authorizing a conveyance, um, how we would, um, why we need to act now on, on just in, in practical terms, what isn't, what would be done between now and when a council would be seated and operational, which we don't exactly know when, what, what what couldn't happen that uh, the trust is in the process of doing if it were to wait entirely? Because really, it just it says the council gets to decide. So why do we need? To, what, how would we defend acting on this article at this time? Uh, good question, Connie. I think there are two reasons to move forward with changing the article. One is it gives the trust some confidence that the town really is interested in seeing us do this, even if we have to wait for final approval of the town council. So I think that's important to us. We've already gotten started, and there are a lot of steps that we can do between now and the time the town council is seated. Ideally, we would have a request for proposals drafted which had, would have embedded in it essentially what the contract language would be between the town and the successful bidder um, by the time the town council is seated. And then we could take that to the town council and say, we've moved this project this far forward. If you approve of this RFP, which has this contract language embedded in it, then that provides the assurance to the successful bidder that they will get the land uh, and that they should contract with the town. So uh, 
there's no reason why that can't all happen when the town council is actually seated. We can go through and take all these steps. Um, but I personally would feel uh, more empowered, if you like, if we have this assurance. The other thing is, the language now, as Doug has said, as I said, is kind of confusing. And I would hate for that language to be standing and someone on the town council says to us, well, we can't convey the land because your developer uh, hasn't taken all the steps necessary to get the money and the permitting. Uh, and I, I really don't want to hear that. I mean, obviously that needs to be in place before the land is formally conveyed, but we don't want to expect the developer to have that in place before they sign a contract. And the way this reads now, in my judgment, in Rita Farrell's judgment, who's our consultant, Tom Cagle's judgment, and this is his day job, that's a problem. So we want to be able to assure whoever comes forward to work with us in development that that's not going to be an issue. Other questions? From the select board? Yes. You're speaking to this? Yes. So you're Hopefully not tonight. That? that would be something if we get there. Right. right. No. But you're comfortable <laughs> with the logic behind this in terms of what we're doing then? Right. That gives me comfort as well. Right. I think that Ms. Kruger's question, though, is, is one that we haven't measured against this. I think we, we looked at this before right. and uh, voted to recommend, but then we, we were still at that point in time yes. waiting for, for some yeah, yeah. advice from our town attorney relative to things that uh, under the transition provisions of the, of the charter should or should not be taken up. And so uh, we do have to, in a sense, sort of uh, grapple with that particular component of this and whether, as you ask a little bit, um, whether it is uh, sufficiently uh, either something that you know, frustrates the implementation of it or is necessary and, and essential to the, to the function of the government. So the, the debate shall begin, I guess. Ms. Well, I, I guess I'm sitting on the fence not because I don't support this initiative, but um, my question was, was around necessary and essential. And it, it seems from my reading of the town attorney's uh, guidance, because it would advance affordable housing, we have a kind of broad umbrella to work under. Um, but I, but you know, we're, we're trying to be very consistent and I'm not, I, I would like to hear from other people why it's necessary and essential now, given that really nothing can happen until the council is seated. Yeah, I mean, I sort of had the same question that you had. I was going to frame it differently, but I think it's the same oh. question. The way I was going to frame it was, what is it that uh, the Affordable Housing Trust can do if town meeting passes this article as it's now being proposed versus what it could do if it doesn't town meeting didn't act at all. Right, if it were right. removed. So it was essentially it was the same question. It didn't seem to me that uh, affordable housing trust can do any more with this action than it can. Originally when we came up with the reason for putting it on the warrant, it was because we understood that it was very important to the, um, that the housing trust would be able to do some things that it, in advancing the project and getting it ready that it couldn't do uh, if uh, there was no steps taken. But now it's less clear to me. Um, as Ms. Kruger knows probably a lot better than I do, with a project like this, it seems to take forever. There are lots of things that can happen one way or another as you're trying to move things along. And my concern is partly, I don't know what exactly the consequences are of not having authorization from town meeting to move ahead. Uh, 
someone can say, well, why are you taking all these steps? Why don't you just stop everything until town council is seated and then inform them about what you're trying to do and see if they're comfortable with your going ahead. Uh, it basically means we're stopped for nine months or a year, given the time it'll take town council to both get seated and settle itself and organize itself to the point where it's ready to address this. So I want to feel comfortable that at least town meeting has said, who knows, they might not say this, that you ought to move ahead with this. I mean, we can get the Historical Commission to move with us, the Conservation Commission to move with us, the School Board to move with us, and then the last thing we'll need is Town Council. But in the meantime, if anybody else says, oh, you're rushing it, you really don't need to get it done, let's wait until Town Council is seated and then we'll go back and look at all these issues again. I really don't want to do that. It makes me anxious. I understand least. why you want the comfort level, but I think for me, I'm, I'm trying to be very um, consistent with this uh, filter that we're trying to ap apply to these. And somebody might say, why are you doing this now? You're rushing. But the trust can also say, because we're confident that we have a good project and we're going to continue on until we get to go before the council. So all the things you just listed, I understand we would prefer this, but you could do all those things. That would be a judgment of the trust, whether you wanted to go ahead and talk to a historic mission. So I'm trying to be, uh, I, I, need, I need to be convinced that there's a material difference to this being acted on. Well, I not. I, understand. I appre totally appreciate Mr. Hunnick, your commitment to this and the comfort part, but I want to know what the material difference is. It's not just the trust. We're going to need to go before the Conservation Commission, the Historical Commission, and the School Committee. And so if we have the backing of town meeting and the select board, we are in a much better position to talk with them than if we don't have those things. Mr. Wall. <clears throat> I, mean, I understand the questions here, and I think in the abstract I have some of the same questions Ms. Kruger and Mr. Uh, Steinberg do. On the other hand, you know, I think we keep going in circles mm -hmm. because we have this mm -hmm. idea we shouldn't, we certainly don't want to do things that would frustrate the purpose of the charter or tie the hands of the council. Uh, I get that. And we have this idea that we should be doing urgent and necessary business. But I think, I mean, maybe it's, I know it's our fault or our town attorney's fault. We're going in circles as to what that means because the one view is do nothing except keep the lights on and the fires burning and the other is continue with normal business. Uh, we are going ahead with inclusionary zoning. I'm not sure if that's any more urgent than this is. Um, <coughs> the other thing is we are paying our town attorney to render opinions and the opinion was very clear that this is legitimate. So I'm, you know, not being a lawyer and a constitutional mm -hmm. expert or anything else, I tend to defer to the opinion of our town attorney in this one. Uh, so yeah, I have some of the same mixed feelings, but I'm not, I'm not sure what is, what is served by blocking this at this point, as opposed to what is gained. Well, it's helpful to me. We're going to have to do something soon because we're running out of time. <laughs> we are indeed. Uh, Brewer, did you have any comment relative to this? Or? Ms. Brewer? No. I conflicted but I okay I'm conflicted but I do appreciate the um, and I know we've all used slightly different variations of what council has said when I was at a warrant review meeting I mentioned the idea of this being something that promotes affordable housing that we have continuously as a community constantly done as KP law references as well so I leaned more on the we're all going the same direction as opposed to it's something new that will somehow thwart the work of the council. Right. So. I think the critical question for me is whether or not, because one of the things that, that the Affordable Trust could not do without this is to go forward with really an RFP process. I think they could put one out, but they really couldn't. Um, I don't know that anyone would want to participate in an RFP process if, if the trust didn't have um, some of this kind of assurances and so it's and I think it's really relative to 
when might that happen? And because I think your point's right, all the other steps, you know, regarding the school committee and those kind of things, the trust can continue to do that. I think it's really around the RFP process and, and actually seeking to partner with a with a, a developer to, to move ahead. Can that happen? And does that inability to do that and the delay in that, is that too great relative to how important we find affordable housing in our community? And I think that's really the, for me, that's the, the question, not that I've fully resolved that in my head, and not that we have mm -hmm. to fully resolve it tonight necessarily, because <coughs> it's unlikely this will come up uh, at tonight's meeting. But but that is the, for me, the real crux of it is 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 um, is that piece. So I think that um, I think that's go ahead. Okay. But that's helpful because and that, that sort of gets to the same question that we've been struggling with all along. And it gives Mr. Hornick, if we're not going to act tonight either way, it gives Mr. Hornick a chance to consult with Ms. Farrell and sort of uh, come, come back at us uh, with an answer um, to the question that we keep asking. Um, if, in fact, um, this... Um, provides them with the ability to get out an RFP and to actually get significant responses to the RFP, then the answer, then, then there's an answer to the question that yes, it is important to have this. Um, so maybe the best thing to do would be to just take no action this evening, take this as an instructive conversation that we all have benefited from, and give the um, people who have been working on it a chance to provide additional information to us. To be honest, I'm not quite sure <coughs> what Rita or Tom would offer that we haven't discussed. I mean, we have to figure out all the steps anyway. And like I said, it's going to take us until probably town council is seated. The one thing we might do as a step, for example, before an RFP, if we have time, is to do a request for information as a way of bringing developers in to see um, what concerns they may have about taking on this project before writing the final RFP. And again, that's a step that we'd be more comfortable taking if we had this authority. Well, not, I don't think we have to take an action this evening if we have some time, because so I, we can take a motion or not, but I'm happy to not take a motion if we want to move ahead and, and take on other topics. So unless someone wants to offer one, I think we can, we can move on to our other. Ms. Brewer. So, what is our? I guess I can look it up in the packet. Our current position is recommend, and so the question is just: Are we changing it from recommend? It isn't that we have no position. Well, and it's recommend was relative to the original, to the original mm -hmm. which was not the language that's now on right. our, mm -hmm. on our mm -hmm. that will be offered as right. a motion. And I get that. Right. So. So it will be a slightly different motion than what we were originally reviewing. Yes. But to be clear, we often have motions. We're lucky we had this one in the script, but we often have motions mm -hmm. that we don't get a chance to revote. Right. And so it, it doesn't sound to me like the crux of this matter is about this language. It's more, mm -hmm. although that's part of it, it's more about the big picture associated with the guidance we've received and right. how we're interpreting right. it. And right. while this right. helps us toward that direction, it still doesn't completely solve that problem, right. that challenge. So what are we going to, what's our plan? Here's an idea. Since we did vote in the affirmative to support this, I could keep that could stand. And we have the opportunity, because we always meet before town meeting, to carry this as an agenda item. And if, if a member at some point makes a motion differently, we have that discussion and we could take a different position, like we could with anything. Right. We're going to learn more tonight from town attorney and others about how we're applying that standard. So we could just leave it the way it was. That's enough for you to prepare your remarks for Absolutely. Article 27. And if any of us feel um, either we need more information from the trust or I'm uncom or uncomfortable letting this be acted on by town meeting, we will have 
probably maybe two more opportunities right. to change that and so we can leave status quo and come back to it. But we did decide we had to talk about it tonight because we had to look at it with the guidance. Thank you. And there's one last question that I have is that with the new provided language, are we actually conveying anything? And if we're not conveying anything, do we need two thirds? Hmm. Interesting. I think it authorizes conveyance later, mm -hmm. and therefore I think it requires a two thirds. It's sort of. Mr. Bachman shaking his head yes. I can't see him, so you're leaning this way. Nodding his head, yes. I just agree with what you're saying. It does um, take care of um, voting to transfer from the school committee, so it does kind of take care of a piece of the business of right. moving it along. Right. That's correct. So that's, right. that's a reason to have. So I, I would recommend we keep, keep it the way it was. All right. We'll, uh, we'll for let, now. We'll, let sleeping dogs lie, as it were, for now. Um, <laughs> and we'll <coughs> potentially come back to it. We'll let you know if we do. We schedule it in a little more. <coughs> I would all other <coughs> members to see if they can provide a better answer to the question of why must you do this now than I've been able to. Hopefully, Mr. Hornick, you understand why we're asking in such I do. detail. May I ask right. one other question? So yes. at this point, do we know of any attempt to schedule this for a time certain? Or date certain. I'm not aware of any of right. what to schedule this particular article for a date certain, just because that decreases our flexibility in terms of how. I mean, was there going to be any motion by the trust at this time that you're aware of to say we really need to talk about this on a certain night? No, I just assumed it would come up in order. Okay. I wasn't asking. What for a nice date calm That's good. way of approaching. That's good. Things. It's good. Thank you. And we, we, we hope we're better helpful. in time for when it right. comes up. That's a couple of weeks from now would be a lot better. <laughs> right. Yes. Exactly. All right, so let's move ahead on our, our agenda and another topic that's under that same one relative to uh, uh, positions is, is Article 28, which has to do with uh, a change to the um, Agricultural Commission. Mm -hmm. And so I think, again, uh, in this regard, we have not taken it in, in context of, of the uh, advice from Town Council relative to transition. Um, I'll say I would suggest this does fall into the, the transition provisions in that one of the difficulties the, um, the Agricultural Commission has had is, is attaining quorum, and both pieces of this article uh, help to, to uh, promote <coughs> quorum. One is by broadening who can be included, uh, and number two, it reduces the total number of members in, uh, in the commission uh, and both of those allow the quorum uh, to be attained more easily and therefore, I think, to, to function a bit better, um, uh, the commission to function a bit better because it has been uh, at times unable to meet for extended stretches because it can't, can't reach quorum. Um, so that's what, what I would suggest relative to this one. Um, if it weren't that circumstance where they were having some struggles with quorum, then then I would suggest that, but given that they have, I think this falls into um, that essential category. To put slightly more of a point on it, I don't think that in theory we generally care if people can meet quorum unless it means that they can't get work done. Those right. two things are not necessarily related with some of our committees, but in this particular case, there is work that they can't do right. that, the ta that the community needs them to do right. in order to <coughs> promote the community's needs. Okay. Right. It's not just a convenience, it's a work can't get done. Okay. So again, this, our motion, uh, I mean, our, our um, I'm not sure if we need to take any action on this because we did vote to recommend it before, mm -hmm. is really a question of whether we think it's, you know, follows the transition provisions, mm -hmm. which I would argue it does, and, and barring anyone objecting to that, then I think that we can probably, again, not have to take any specific action tonight unless someone wants to offer mm -hmm. that. Hearing none, I think we'll move, <laughs> move ahead. Um, and so I think, um, let's see, I think that, uh, let's see, we have been reviewing the KP Law Opinion on Transition of Matters Before Town Meetings, so that's been part and parcel of taking positions and that sort of thing. I don't think we have any other <coughs> Perhaps, so next is our uh, consent calendar, which has 
the annual Taste of Amherst, which I presume is why you're here. Yes. So would you like to, why don't you tell us about that since yeah. you're here? And Thank you, Sloan and Peter Vickery here as President of the Board of Directors of the Amherst Area Chamber of Commerce, and I'm here to ask you to approve a liquor license application for the taste this year, scheduled for June 14th to 17th on the Common. Mm -hmm. Very grateful for you to approve it. Uh, the pours will be from the pub, uh, Jerry Jolly, with whom you're, you're familiar, and his insurance certificate is in. When the new insurance uh, kicks in, I will be happy to provide that. If there are any other pours in addition to those identified earlier today with their uh, certificate numbers and dates of certification, I will provide those as well. Um, but this is something we're doing in conjunction with the bid this year, then taking a new role in coordinating, and uh, I'd be very grateful for your approval. Thank you. Do you have any questions? So I'm fine with moving forward on the liquor license. I'm still having a problem with the parking proposal. All right. So we can see if those are separated in time. Mm -hmm. We can, I mean, in, in consent, I'm happy to move forward with the liquor license, but to hold out the metered parking and road closure section that we attempted to address last time, but has now become more complicated again. Right. So if someone would like to move uh, the portion of the consent calendar I or, move to or, or excise the piece oh, that, that? Yeah. <laughs> you don't want the consent calendar and then move the Good. consent calendar. So I move to approve the items listed on the consent calendar for the April 30, 2018 agenda as amended removing the item metered parking and road closure for the 27th annual Taste of Amherst, June 14 to June 16, 2018. Is there a second? Second. All right. So what we have before us are the, the special licenses. Um, is there further discussion on those? I'm willing to move forward as a, as a consent calendar item, except the motion is insufficient on the taste in terms of the alcohol service because it says the service is being done at the taste. It does not specify that the service is being done where it's being done, which we normally list, just as UMass has to list its property or addresses mm -hmm. are listed. It's just missing a section, and it needs to reference the um, Amherst College address that Mr. Uh, Vickery helpfully put here, 49 to 62 Boltwood Avenue. It's right on their liquor license application. So if our, if our minutes taker could include that, that would, into the motion, that would be helpful. To make it clear, it's on the Amherst College property, most importantly. Mm -hmm. Yes, we don't want somebody to say a year later, oh, you did it on the common that year. Oh. Won't be our problem. <laughs> <laughs> Is our <there a> new mantra? <laughs> oh, man. All right. Is there further discussion? He has made an appropriate note. I saw him do it. Um, if there's not any further discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. And then relative to the metered parking, so the reason, I'm sorry, Mr. Vickery, you don't want to hear about the parking? No, oh. he doesn't really. Um, so so this, this is where I have to ask my colleagues to go back in their memory banks because I didn't bother to pull this out because I didn't know this was going to happen and I was too busy working on other dates this weekend to possibly have looked at these details. So what I complained about last time, to be clear, is whether or not things had changed since last year and the only change I noted was that it says Saturday, June 16th from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m., whereas it had been 1.30 p.m., a mere difference of 30 minutes, which appears to still accommodate the parking for the farmer's market, so on, you know, and that conflict we always work on. So I'm fine with that, and I appreciate that the language was put here. Unfortunately, it doesn't say when we did it, and so I'm frantically searching here for the minutes or packet that shows when that happened, just saying it happened in 2017. And the reason I care is because I remember part of last year's conversation. I remember the part where I said over and over again they send us this letter where they work in at the end of a paragraph that they want us to remove the food trucks from the common, and we should actively address that yes or no rather than just ignoring the statement in their in their request. I didn't believe that we were had actually gone ahead and done that, but I could be convinced otherwise. It says here in the material that was brought forward on our motion sheet that we did suspend food truck service. So I'm, I'm not going to pretend it 
I can't believe it, but I'm surprised that we allegedly did that. Does anybody else remember where we ended with that conversation? Because I can't, since no minutes are referenced here, I can't find it. What I remember, and I don't remember if it was for this request or when we were looking at lunch, cards, yeah. which we did a couple times, in that, that instance where someone's doing an event with food on the common and not wanting the competition, you know, or siphoning off customers from their event yeah. to the, the food truck. And I remember saying I, I wanted the food truck trucks to still be there, and I remember other people saying, no, it, it, wasn't fair, it wasn't fair to do that when somebody was having this kind of an event. So I don't have a definitive answer for you, Ms. Brew, but we did have a conversation we, we've talked about, about this, yeah. so maybe we need to decide. I mean, does this have that caveat, or? Well, supposedly, according to what's been transported no, onto our motion sheet, we did do that. I, I'm a little surprised. I don't actually think we did. Uh, about removing? I remember more people wanted it removed than wanted them to and stay. If and I, that's I was in true. the minority, but I don't. I can't tell you what really. So I guess what I'm asking is, can we just go ahead and do the parking? Because now we know that that hasn't changed because we were given a map in yep. terms of the yep. location. Just that half hour. And it's just that half hour. Mm -hmm. It's not <coughs> physically changed. So that isn't going to cause mm -hmm. any problems with people who get mad at us when we change parking. And um, at this time, not it again on our motion sheet doesn't say anything about the uh, food service for this the food the mm -hmm. lunch carts right. for this year. And so at this point, I believe we should take that to mean, even though it should be our choice whether or not to do it, not the person who's writing the motions for us, um, that we are not going to take action on that request and that if someone can find information that indicates we did truly do that last year and wants to revisit it, then I think we can revisit it another night. So food trucks are not removed if that's specifically asked for, they would have to come back and ask that yes. and have a separate conversation. I agree. That's what I say. <coughs> I just don't like ignoring a sentence in somebody's request and just pretending it's not there. But given the statement you just made, I think that the min if the minutes could reflect to that, that we are not taking action unless one of us or the applicant comes back and says, "You did. don't you remember you did this last year? It worked out great. <laughs> and, and we don't have to do it the same way. We might make a different um, decision. So was there a motion in there? <laughs> we, so, we motion. so just as long as I'll make, I'll read the motion, but I just want to make sure I, I don't think I'm including anything in the motion about ignoring that sentence in their request. I think we're just making sure the minutes that hopefully we can somebody can find in a future year show that we are not making any to not taking any action on uh, the request on food. On lunch cards. So, therefore. I move to approve the following street closing parking request from the Amherst Business Improvement District and Amherst Area Chamber of Commerce for the annual Taste of Amherst event to one, to place no parking bags on parking meters around the perimeter of the town common, including the north and south sides of the Spring Street lot beginning Thursday, June 14th, 2018 from 12 p.m. to 9 p.m., Friday, June 15th, 2018 from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m., Saturday, June 16th, 2018, from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m., and Sunday, June 17th, 2018, from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m., to accommodate taste vendor parking, and two, to close Boltwood Avenue between Spring Street and Route 9 on Friday, June 15th, 2018, and Saturday, June 16th, 2018, from 7 p.m. to 9.30 p.m., peak pedestrian crossing times for the beer and wine tasting at Amherst College. I am adding the words to the motion, at Amherst College. Second. Did you want the address? Too? Yes. <coughs> so you just gave it to us. And it was 49 to 62, Bowl Bowl Bowl. Yeah. as opposed to, it's across Route 9. It's across. <laughs> it's across. Yeah, so you got yeah. nailed down. Yeah. OK, then we have a second. Mm -hmm. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vickery, for staying with us. All right. I'll ask the manager if there are any key information updates relative to the logistics 
of town meetings. Since when? Until <laughs> yes. so, yes. yes. no. yeah. late <laughs> Uh, note that town attorney Joel Bart is here. Great to meet you. Thank you for coming. Should bring in these special padded suits, and helmets, <laughs> shields. All good suggestions. For <laughs> How about candy? Oh, that's good. <laughs> that might help. It's like at Mardi Gras. You throw it in. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's for the spike board. You can. That's generous. Um, I, since Joel was coming to me, I just asked him to come by your meeting in case if you had any last minute questions or things to bring up, mm -hmm. or if there's any updates from your on your end, Joel, that you know of. Um, well, I is everyone aware that there will be a proposal? This has to do with the election calendar, Article One of the special town meeting. Thank you. And so there'll be a proposal to come up with dates that's somewhere between what's in the special act and the default. And so you know, we're going to make a motion, I gather, for yet another set of dates. The ones that were sent to us in the, the ones we've seen or additional other ones? I think there are other ones out there that people are developing. Okay, that's right. Yeah, not, it was a, a brief one. Suggested a date that was that the election be held in early October, I think it was. Um, and that was simply for the, the preliminary. Date. What's that? The preliminary. For the preliminary, sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's simply too close to when the actual election will be held because you can't print ballots, of course, till the preliminary is held, till the results are certified. If there are any recounts, then forget it. Um, but even without recounts, it doesn't need enough time. But the other one um, is, has an earlier preliminary election, but it's still, it, you know, the election calendar is, is always very tight, you know, because you need to print ballots and then they have to be available to be mailed out and so forth. So the, the um, I haven't seen, I guess, a detailed calendar that would be proposed. But in any of it, that will be presumably proposed as well. And, and, it, and by the way, I'm sorry, but one other point is that, and, it, and by the folks who you know, sent you all a, a letter, a memo, whatever, some opposition a week plus ago, that runs into its own mm -hmm. issues because then you run into the um, holiday break for students. And we actually, had Lauren was, was sending me an email. I haven't, we were talking about it on the drive out here, but essentially, it, um, there the actual election happens just as the students for the meeting. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no perfect time. Uh, we with a lot of transitional students. We may, you know, we may not be here at certain times of the year. So, so I guess I. Uh, Failing to understand why, if the charter is as clear as it is about the election alternatives, and essentially saying we should be asking uh, the legislature uh, for uh, an election in November, the November specific date, and a specific date in September, which we've now interpreted was a um, with good intent, but has been out promoted and needs to be shifted because it was intended to be the primary, or it is stated as primary, and it still would be the primary. So that's one. And then there's an alternative. If that fails, then these are the election dates. So it seems to me that um, the voters have spoken and that there is no authority to do anything else besides those two alternatives. I think so. Yeah. I mean, the, this new alternative is designed to address a problem that we don't think exists. And, and I guess that would be their argument, but I don't see that the fallback schedule has any of the problems that they are pointing to. Nor do we think that the, the original calendar has that, the original calendar tweaked. Yeah. And keeping in mind that the calendar in part had to be tweaked because the state primary election date got moved, as you all know. 
It's brewed. So therefore, is so there's a couple mm -hmm. thousand gotcha. layers here, but one of them is that we believe this group plus the attorneys believe that the tweaks that are being made in the motion that's going to be made are to do the things that we talked about at some length now and um, not necessarily just here but previously about the um, incorporating because of the actual date of the primary and then how that flows with overseas and military ballots so that everybody kind of gets everything and can get everything at the same time and it actually makes elections more accessible to people um, in terms of all the different peoples. Um, but it sounds like at one point the moderator was considering since we were making those changes that that somehow meant that within scope of the article would be anything that makes up dates that are in between that range of the original special legislation question. And so I'm trying to understand if we are saying we support this, but hey, the moderator does what the moderator does, or are we still trying to say, uh, the moderator, you know, I mean, the moderator can do what the moderator does, but are we saying mm -hmm. that actually it isn't a preference, it's that more of, along the lines of what Mr. Steinberg said, it is what mm -hmm. it is, and it's done, and it's not appropriate to try and tweak it within that time, beyond the fact that every practical application of that, which I myself have also spent hours on trying to sort out well, if we did this, then 20 days ahead of that, and 20 days ahead of that. That's why they chose these dates, because it was insanely hard to pick dates. And the fallback dates are after Hampshire College students come back. The, or, I mean, before Hampshire mm -hmm. College students right. come back. So there was a reason these things were, were chosen. Right. So I'm just asking for some clarity when we have like yeah. nine minutes left. What action do we need to take right. tonight regarding the vote? Our vote was on different dates. Yep. And um, what what do we need to do to affirm to what's and what message do we deliver in like eight minutes to figure that right. out? Right. If I could just address what I heard, I mean, I have a question from Ms. Brewer. So I did call the moderator this afternoon to ask him about this, this mm -hmm. intermediate set of dates and, and, and what I understood to have been his opinion that it was within the scope. And they said, you know, this isn't the same as a zoning example, a black and white example, right. where a meeting proposes to allow a district with 20 foot heights to go to 30 foot heights, and then 25 is okay because it's in the middle. Is uh, the points that you know, just made that um, it's more complicated than that, and there are parameters presumably created by the special act, but the moderator, in his wisdom and discretion, is going to allow it. So I think it's maybe more a question of making the arguments against the substance rather than. So it seems like we had a discussion before that our understanding of the transition language of the charter says that the select board shall make that final decision. We can make that final decision, but it would be the moderator that decides what action town meeting can take. So um, where does that leave us? I mean, what really, we about we have just a few minutes to fashion a statement. It seems to me, I mean, there's one other aspect of it, and that is that uh, does town meeting really have the authority to do anything more than to approve the submitting of the special legislation or not? Is there any other authority under the, the charter to take action? The, I mean, those are good questions, but the problem is the moderator gets to decide that and he's made it clear, he's made his decision and he's going to allow it, I mm -hmm. frankly totally disagree. But I don't think I changed his mind. Mr. Wall. But, but I guess what happens then if town meeting passes something that we think is invalid and it next steps, I mean would it be invalidated higher up in the state government or well yeah, so that's a good question. I mean so then you I mean at that point you'd have two choices as mm -hmm. a select board. One is not to submit it, mm. and then just go to the default calendar, mm -hmm. and the other is to submit it and see if the legislature decides, no, that's outside of the scope, so basically, mm -hmm. was not authorized mm -hmm. by, um, by the charge. And I guess if asked, I will say that <coughs> one can't predict what the legislature will 
in fact, I, I think I made this point to the moderator, that one can predict how the legislature would react, but the legislature might look at that and say, sorry, we're not going to act on that because that wasn't authorized by the charter, which went through the whole charter commission process and was voted by the voters. Okay, cool. And then what happens? When well, the legislature says no, where are we? Then we're at the default. The January, January, February. But automatically. Yeah. Right, no. the December, January. Right. Right. Because we don't want. That's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. Which prolongs, of course, the transition mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. And who's, who's speaking to this? It's you. So you have to know what to say. Well, well he's I, I'm going to make the motion, which won't include any of those dates yet. No. So any right. subsequent, feel free to chime in is what I would suggest if you have to, an opinion to offer if, if other motions are made and amendments are made. Absolutely. If, if you feel confident and comfortable with that, please do. Ms. Brewer. Since you knew this was coming in all your spare time this weekend, I know that you're somewhat prepared to speak to alternates, but I think it's most important that you do go ahead and speak to the fact that the default, if everything mm -hmm. goes wrong, mm -hmm. in terms of people might love this new idea of new dates, mm -hmm. and we might even think, ah, oh, those aren't so bad, right. and then it's out of our hands, mm -hmm. and it may still fail mm -hmm. for at least two reasons right. that have come across. So even if we submitted it, mm -hmm. it may be that the AGO says no, or right. it may be that before, that, or it may be that, I'm sorry, it's the right. special, right. special legislation, the AGO has nothing to say about it. But when the legislators talk to the person at the elections division and she says no, then they're going to drop it like a hot potato because they mm -hmm. aren't going to want anything to do with it, in which case then the default. So I think it needs to be said at the beginning mm -hmm. why the default dates are not as good in terms of meeting the same needs as this. However, my problem with that, Mr. Bard, is that I feel like if we say anything like that, it makes it more problematic that those dates exist and makes it more likely that people feel that to, if I say those are bad dates, then people are like, well, good, let's sue you over those. So, um, when you say those, you mean the, the alternate dates, the, alternate the, dates. the default ones, because, because the, the default. default ones are clearly not yeah. as good at addressing all the things that we said were important about consistency mm -hmm. of elections and availability of things. They are clearly not as good. That doesn't necessarily make them bad. <laughs> and so, what I'm trying to understand is. Do you recommend any limitations on how we describe this? Given potential, we always can be sued. We understand that any day of the week. But given how yeah, aggravated fun. people have been about this particular issue, do you have any advice on? Well, only that, to state the obvious, that there are two sets of dates mm -hmm. that were vetted, if you will, yes. by the townsfolk over a process that lasted well over a year. and are more likely, should there be challenges of any nature, more likely to be upheld than some dates that have been put out at the 11th and a half hour town meeting floor, which don't necessarily address some of the perceived shortcomings of the two other sets of dates. Can you mention so, that the town meeting is supposed to start in one minute? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. my, my one cent on this is, I just would like us to make a really strong cautionary statement that we've that we are supporting these dates and that we don't know and we're not confident that alternate dates would be accepted and we're not, we don't know yet if it would be submitted. And I don't want to get into a threat and threatening, if this happens, we're not going to do that, but that for people to understand that there's the possibility that no action would be taken if we think we can't support the alternate dates through an amendment. But I just, I think a really strong statement might piss people off. All right. Should cool. we adjourn? Yes, we should. I move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor, say aye. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, Let me. Oh, oh wait, 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 wait. Let's not adjourn. Let's, 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 we're not we're adjourning. Not adjourning. We, are, yeah. we are. We are. Oh, we're suspended. Recess. We are okay. recessing the meeting. Thank That's you. Right. I move to recess the meeting. Yeah. Is there a second? Second. second. Yeah. With All the idea favor. that we will, we will then come back to continue after. after yeah. the we can take an action, but we're not closing. We're not adjourning. We're still in session. Are you going to be meeting during town meeting? No, After. that's why we're saying it's a recess. We want to see what happens, and that way we have an opportunity. <coughs> so we are in recess.